Well, I just got to camp here in Powder River. I'm out in Montana for an early season hunt. Now for years, I've been coming late season, but this year I'm out here second week out and I'm really excited. Now I've got both a deer and antelope tag. So we're gonna primarily be hunting deer in the evenings, antelope midday to the mornings, and it should be really exciting. It's gonna be a different hunt. These deer are coming to green fields. So we're gonna get in on the river bottoms, try to beat the heat, beat the mosquitoes, and hopefully get out there and shoot a big buck. And one of the first things I like to do when I get into camp, shoot my bow. So just getting a couple of shots, I drove here, everything should be good. Looks like it's shooting great, but I'll shoot a couple more. Then we're gonna head out. Now I've been coming here to Powder River Outfitters for years, in fact, I think this is like my ninth year. So it's always fun to come back. It's almost like family now. I think what we're gonna do is go put out an antelope blind first. That way we're ready in the morning. We're actually gonna get in there in the pitch black again. And then we're gonna hunt deer in the evening. So this evening we're going after deer and I can't wait. Well, the great thing, what we try to do is hunt the antelopes in the morning and uh, hunt whitetail in the afternoon. Our morning hunts, because our bedding ground on our deer is so shallow, it's so hard to get into a good spot without bumping anything. And the antelope, you know, they usually water by noon, one o'clock, so it works perfect. And it keeps everybody in the field hunting. And, you know, you got the ability to take two critters in one shot. It had been quite some time since I had done an early season whitetail hunt in Montana. This is one location I go back to year after year, but I'm usually hunting late season. In fact, I've had so much fun over the years rattling in those whitetails on the river bottoms, but usually I'm there late season, right before Thanksgiving, and it is absolutely amazing. You know, our deer should average anywhere from 130 to 150 on the most part, but most of our hunters are gonna see that 160, 170 deer. Um, whether we get him or not is something else, but we've got a large volume of the 140 class deer. Um, this year, the horns have been extremely heavy, and our weather pattern really has a lot to do with how their horn growth is. But there's just so many bucks, and you get to see, you know, while you're here, you should be able to see 10, 15 Pope and Young deer. Well, I just got on stand out here in Montana and it is hot out right now. But we're on the shady side and we already had a doe come out on the field while we were getting ready. We've got everything organized. Looks like a great setup. We've got the river on this side. We've got a field right here that they're feeding on and kind of a staging area here. We've got two or three good trails coming right past our stand. So it looks like we're in a great setup early yet we got in plenty of time a lot of these deer are moving about six sunsets around eight so can't wait glad to be out whitetail hunting first whitetail hunt of the season can't wait to get started tip of the week is brought to you by hha sports the world's number one selling single pin adjustable bow sight I love hunting whitetails so much is because it's a real challenge. Their sense of smell is incredible and getting within shooting range of a big mature buck, it takes a lot. But I'm a firm believer in creating my own advantages before I ever step into the woods. One of the ways I do this is by spraying down all my clothing with scent killer gold. I do this before I hunt, before I hang stands, and even before I check cameras and put out mock scrapes. To make things even better, well, Wildlife Research Center just came out with a scent killer gold with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. It's now 99% effective at stopping replicated human odor for 20 days after drying in testing at Rutgers University. That's right, 20 days. So there's numerous reasons why this can be helpful to you while hunting. First, when it's absolutely freezing temps, you don't have to worry about spraying down that morning. 
Simply pre-treat your clothing and it will effectively turn your hunting clothes into a high-powered scent elimination suit. Scent Killer Gold attacks a wide range of odors, but most importantly, human odor. You can spray down whatever you decide to wear along with your backpack, boots, any accessories, and you're all set. Another thing I love, they've incorporated a new high output sprayer that will even spray upside down. So put everything to your advantage and give the new Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology Plus a try. It's simple, apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Sportsman's Alliance, our heritage, our fight. Protecting hunting from coast to coast. Did you know the Sportsman's Alliance has fought to open access to public lands and to protect those specific lands? They helped make hunting a priority on national wildlife refuges and even sued the federal government last year to protect scientific predator management and hunting on those lands. Just another fun fact showing you how sportsmen and women are helping make a difference. I'm a huge fan of doing any type of combo hunts. Anytime you can go to one location and have multiple different species to go after, well, I absolutely love it. And that's exactly what I was gonna be doing on this trip to Montana with Powder River Outfitters. Travis Anderson and I were gonna be going after whitetails and antelope. Oh, the early season whitetails, after they shed their velvet, they can really change a lot. Sometimes they'll stay in the woods for a week at a time, you know, the last couple of years we've had a lot of rain, um, so there's a lot of short green grass in the timber and they eat a lot of the berries off the Russian olives, um, so they don't have to come out. You know, they can live in 100 yards and feed and water in the same spot, so it can make it really rough. And as we sat up on stand, well, we spotted some really nice deer. But the trouble is, well, Travis had been seeing some absolute giants. He had the pictures of them. He really wanted us to try to hold out the best we could for a really nice buck. We had a couple come through that were just a little bit too thin. We had one come through that had stuff all in his antlers, came out to the field, and all the other deer are looking at him. He's kind of looking around like, what's everybody looking at? <laughs> and it's just neat to see things like that. It's things that people wouldn't generally get to see but unfortunately, we just hadn't had a shot yet. But we were switching back and forth from antelope to whitetails and back to antelope. Well, we're getting ready to go out antelope hunting. Now, again, we're out in the dark, but the good news is these antelope are really close to where we we're gonna be going. So we wanna make sure that we're getting in there bright and early. We've got a lunch pack for the day should be all set. Now the good news is, is we looked at this place before. We know what the setup is. We know those antelope are going to be close. So I'm pretty excited to get in there. Of course, you never know anything's a slam dunk, but we've got a really good shot. There's a big buck in the area and sometimes with antelope, that's all you need. Then you just got to put in your time and hopefully your patience pays off. For whitetails, we were going to be primarily setting up in tree stands over fields. But for antelope, well, we were going to be using blinds. And Travis and I decided to go out and put a blind up right away. Now, he had been scouting some antelope, and it was very similar to how you'd scout whitetails. He had been watching them go back and forth, and they had one pinch point that they had been coming through. What a perfect solution. We thought if we set up right at that pinch point, we can hunt antelope just like whitetails, and we were hoping it would work. So far the morning hasn't quite gone as planned. We started off the morning and we thought all the antelope were gonna be on this side and then filter their way across, right across the little dike that we're sitting on. In fact, we had one doe come across really early and I saw others there and I thought, perfect, we're gonna get them and I don't know where he's at, but he wasn't with those does. They've all filtered their way across, and now I can see animal about just feeding. I can't see if that buck is out there, but I know there's a lot there, so I don't know if they normally come back and feed their way back through here, but 
We're gonna sit here for the day. It is super hot. It's probably 90 degrees. The thing is, they have water all over the place. Right now, all these irrigation ditches are running and they could go water anywhere. The reason we sit up here is because of that pinch point. I was thinking it would work this morning, but unfortunately, that's not the case, but might still work later on in the day. All we're gonna do is sit here and find out. This segment was brought to you by Boss Buck. For the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market, choose Boss Buck Feeders. Now you're getting serious. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Hard-Hitting Easton Arrows, Golden Triangle Whitetail, Winchester, the American Legend, National Deer Alliance, HHA Sports, the leader in single pin technology. Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Rage Broadheads, leading the evolution in lethal technology. Convergent Hunting Solutions, where experience, innovation, and passion meet. Sportsman's Alliance, protecting hunting from coast to coast. Engel Coolers, the original high performance cooler company. And Moose Utility Division, your leader in ATV UTV accessories. As far as antelope hunting goes, usually you can't necessarily pattern them up. Sure, you can sit over water, and I've had incredible luck sitting over water holes, but that can be kind of boring, and it's long hours. Antelope hunting, it is long hours in the blind. And that's okay, because when it all works out, check this out, my first ever antelope. It's worth it. But on this trip, we were gonna be hunting the antelope a little bit different. Travis had spotted an area where he thought the antelope were crossing. And because of the way the farmer's field worked, he actually had all this water going around that irrigated his fields and the antelope had no way to go except for one specific area. So it was almost like a little land bridge that they would cross to get from one field to the other. Well, that's exactly where we were gonna set up. We've seen this buck kept trapping his toes in a kind of a little isolated island every day. So we went down to where we got the wind right. A lot of people don't think antelope can wind you, but the ones that have been around blinds and been hunted before, they'll dang sure wind you. He had bed him in there to keep him away from all them other bucks. And then he didn't have to fight or didn't have to run anybody off. And then in the day, he'd move them off and they'd feed. Um, pretty good pinch point. We just had some does start coming our way. There's a whole group of them. I can't see where that buck is at yet, but those does are coming right in. Looks like they're gonna come right here but there's a ton of them, and I'm sure that buck's with him. He's the only one that's been around here. But it looks like we've got a good spot. Just hopefully they can get through and not spook out first. All of a sudden, I finally spotted that big buck we were after. He had a ton of does out there, and we had antelope all around us. And I'm thinking, okay, we've got a lot of does here. We've got does on the other side. I hope he follows them right up and he'll come right through our lane. So as we're sitting in that blind, patiently waiting, everything seems to be working for us. He's coming this way. He's coming in just like clockwork and I'm starting to get super nervous because it looks like it's gonna happen. We've got probably 20 does in front of us right now. They're watering right at this pinch point that we're sitting at. I don't think we could have put our blind in a better spot. We've got a 40 yard shot. If it works out, he should end up right in our lap. He's going right behind that drill when he comes out. As soon as he stops, I'm gonna draw.
we just had the envelope come in and I don't know why but I'm about hyperventilating I'm shaking so bad I couldn't even hardly get it together looks like a good shot he came right at the blind and knocked another arrow and he went down right there I thought maybe he went in the water but <laughs> wow what a beautiful buck look at this <laughs> this is a nice one this might be one of my bigger ones I've taken just beautiful. Man, he's got good mass, don't he? And the coolest thing is, I mean, how many people would ever think you can hunt an antelope using a pinch point? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not very many. Well, we've had just an awesome hunt out here. It's early season. A lot of times I'll come early season just for antelope, but we're actually doing a combo hunt out here right now. I'm out here with Powder River Outfitters. Travis and I, we've been having an awesome time, and he brought Super Guide along with today, too. So I think we had all the luck we needed. Got a beautiful antelope out here. Just a great hunt, put a good shot. And now it's getting a little warm, so we'll get out of here and uh, pretty excited. My mom's gonna be happy. She, she loves antelope. Yeah. <laughs> Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews Archery. Field and stream, where traditions begin. ScoutLookWeather.com. Download the free ScoutLook hunting app for your smartphone. Range Master Trailers, luxury gone rugged. Master Hand Milling, revolutionizing the range. Reinhardt, the best archery targets in the world. Garmin, enhance your outdoor adventures. Winchester, the American legend. S4 gear. SCI, first for hunters. And Boss Buck, for the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market. Now you're getting serious. This segment was brought to you by SCI, protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation. SCI is first for hunters, but first can't stay first without you. Join like your way of life depends on it. when you're going after early season whitetails, well a lot of that is determined by what your cuttybacks are picking up. And in Montana, you can't use trail cameras once the season starts, but prior to the season, well Travis had his cuttybacks out and he was getting a ton of nice bucks. Now these bucks are just coming out of velvet that first week of archery hunting, so we weren't gonna be seeing many bucks in velvet anymore, but I knew these bucks were out there, they're coming to the fields, and he had some big boys out there. Seems like the, the smaller bucks come out with the does. You know, a lot of times we'll still see 50, 60 head of does in the fields and see eight, 10, you know, two and three year old bucks. But the older bucks get slow, but it seems like every three or four nights they'll come out and give us a shot. So as we were sitting on stand, we saw an absolutely beautiful heavy 10 that came through and it was pretty tempting to shoot. He was a gorgeous deer, but it was one of those things. I knew there were some big bucks in the area and I've taken a lot of nice Montana deer. So this year I was convinced I'm gonna try to hold out, try to wait it out, and I let this guy walk. Now, I may regret that and I may have started regretting it right after I did it but it was really a beautiful deer. And again, it's just fun to go out to a place like Montana and see the number of deer. Now, as we were switching back and forth, well, Travis had been up in his vehicle and spotted an absolutely huge buck that was crossing into a field. But the trouble is, we didn't want to move a blind right to that field and get busted out because we needed to make a move that night. It was the last night of my hunt and I thought, what are we going to do? So, as a team, we decided we're making a hay bale blind. Now, once we put this hay bale out in the field, well, you couldn't tell this hay bale from anything else. And I thought, we're in. We're in the money. We're going to get right up on these deer. Finally, we had a nice buck coming through. It was just getting dark and it was just too far of a shot. I was in that blind, it had been raining. The last thing I wanna do is make a marginal shot in low light 
and I decided to pass him. Now he was a beautiful deer. It was cool to see our plan work out, but it's one of those things. It's not worth the risk. And I didn't want to wound a deer. I knew I could come back and my plan was to come back late season once again. This trip, this was just a bonus. I got a beautiful antelope, but next time, well, I was gonna have to come back late season for one of those nice whitetails. This segment was brought to you by Convergent Hunting Solutions. Try their electronic game calls today, featuring Bluetooth technology to work right with your smartphone.